Hey, what's going on everybody? Coach Jerry here with Biohacking Truth, where we deliver health freedom through unleashing human potential. And it's really our life's mission to uh, cost Big Pharma millions and millions of dollars, one person at a time. Uh, it's our true belief that Big Pharma is a legalized mafia and you know, basically um, they're profiting off of our sickness and they have no interest in getting us well. And uh, it's in their business model to keep us sick. And uh, if you have any doubts about that, just look around. If you live in America or a Western nation, just look around and, and see how good of a job the white coats and the you know, doctors and the pharmacists are, are doing. How are the white coats doing for us? Not very good. And uh, you know, part of that, part of my, my job and part of my daily interactions with people is trying to sell them on, on um, my take on, on things and my approach to the health game. Sometimes it goes really well, sometimes it doesn't. You know, we're indoctrinated to believe everything that the white coat tells us. We're indoctrinated to believe everything that the white coat in the pharmacy tells us. And we're just, you know, we've offloaded our uh, research. We've offloaded our critical thinking, you know, when it comes to our health to uh, the gods of pharma and science. And, you know, the actual truth about health is that you gotta biohack your way out of it. You've got to be intentional with what you're putting into your body, how you move your body, how you use your mind, how you surround yourself with people, what tasks you're um, immersing yourselves in. Um, because if you just let the world happen to you, you've got people coming after you, you wanna talk conspiracy theory, there's always a conspiracy for your attention, there's always a conspiracy for your dollars. So no matter what, there are people thinking really hard on how to get your attention and how to distract you from you know your life's purpose and from your big dreams. Because if you're chasing something important and you're thinking for yourself, you're not very profitable for those that want your money and want your attention. So that's kind of a, a short version of it, but um, a big part of my job is talking to people, like I said, and it doesn't always go well when I'm, when I'm letting them know, uh, you know just the reality of the situation uh, when, it, when it comes to health. And a lot of that comes, inter with that comes a lot of interesting stories, interesting conversations. And I like to share these whenever appropriate um, because my hope is that somebody that might be stuck in a mind trap, um, in a uh, state of mental disease, um, that doesn't mean mental illness, but a mind disease, right? Where we put obstacles in our way and we, we believe them and don't ask ourselves if it's really true. And these obstacles can form our lives, they can run our lives, they can, they can really dictate our results and our fulfillment and happiness. And one example that I'd like to share with you is with the gentleman that I talked to um, last week. We'll call him Bill. And Bill was, is a 54-year-old entrepreneur, very successful, very much a go-getter. Uh, he just opened his third business and uh, about three months ago. Well, Bill's backstory is that Bill's um, got some injuries in the neck and lower back. He's got fusions in both those areas from a car accident. Um, he used to be very healthy in his estimation, uh, thin at least. So he used to be thin, you know, healthy weight. And then he got in this car accident and something happened to his metabolism and you know, he put on, what was it? 64 pounds. So he put on 64 pounds within a matter of about a year. And uh, that was about a decade ago. So he's been dealing with this for like a decade and he's been searching for the answer for the better part of that decade. Um, and so he's stuck in this very common cycle where we're looking for uh, information for free because the information we're getting is so conflicting, we don't know what to commit to. We don't know which, which ideology we're gonna embrace. One week, low carbohydrate sounds great. The next week, high carbohydrate sounds great. One week, you know, plant-based sounds awesome next week. Carnivore sounds awesome and there's science behind all of it. So he's really stuck in this trap. Uh, we call this cherry picking, uh, relying on out of context information to get his um, answers. So as you can imagine for the last 10 years, relying on out of context information to get himself healthy hasn't worked out so well. So he booked a call with me and this was actually part of his strategy, continue to do this, find out of context information. Never really met me before, we're gonna talk for an hour and he's gonna find his answer, he hopes. Problem is he doesn't know what the answer looks like because he doesn't know enough about health and wellness and, and you know managing a healthy weight. So Bill and I get to talk and come to find out Bill's 54 years old. Bill's been dealing with this for the better part of a decade. Bill's an entrepreneur, go-getter, high, high personal standard for himself, high level of conscientiousness um, by his own 
by his own standard, by his own um, uh, description of himself. And so it turned, you know, it gets very apparent that Bill has some shadows and one of his shadows is his weight and his health. I mean, it's in one breath, he'll tell me it's on his mind, you know, 20 hours a day. And in the next breath, tell me how he really doesn't, doesn't really pay much attention to it. So it's on his mind 24 seven, he doesn't pay attention to it. So you can imagine the conflicts going on in Bill's mind. But we'll just cut to the chase here. So Bill, Bill uh, is with me on the phone and Bill's telling me how this is the biggest issue of his life. And I ask him, you know, what's gonna happen, Bill, when you don't get this taken care of? You know, if, if, you, if you do what you always do, you know, and this is, this is based on other things that we uncovered, but you know, we got to, we got to um, down to a, a habit trait that Bill has. And that is, um, Bill likes to just focus on, on what he is excited about and everything else falls by the wayside. So consequently, he never gets excited about his health because he doesn't really know what he's doing. And so Bill's the type of guy who doesn't like to do things that he doesn't understand and he doesn't, he's not good at. So he's not good at health, he's not good at fitness. And so that makes him not wanna go there. And so we found out that one of Bill's shadows is that Bill likes to, like I said, keep himself occupied instead of paying attention to what's going on. So we're, he's doing this thing he does, right? Where he opens a new business instead of dealing with his health. So I asked Bill, what's the cost of inaction? You know, if you don't get this fixed, if you do what you always do, which is remain distracted, um, what's gonna happen? And you know, if your health remains a shadow and you can continue to illuminate other things and create a shadow on your health, what is the net effect of that? And he, without hesitation, says, oh, I'll be in a wheelchair, guaranteed. Wheelchair bound, he says. I said, can you imagine anything, you know, that's on your horizon that, you're tra that your trajectory is headed towards that is more uh, disheartening than that? No, no, that's that's the biggest thing. It's the biggest concern. It's the biggest thing on his mind. So we get down, you know, we we'll get him to admit he really doesn't know what he's doing. Um, he's he's so distractible that you know once we get off this call, he's probably gonna stop thinking about his health. Um, the cost of his inaction or failure to pay attention to this or take this from the shadows to the illuminated 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 side of himself, right? Shine light on it. Failure to do that is gonna put him in a wheelchair. He's gaining weight rapidly and he has no, there's no sign of it reversing. So he is inevitably headed towards, oh, and he's also got heart disease and diabetes in his family. So he's inevitably headed towards most likely heart disease, diabetes, cancer, more than one of those, um, and more fusions and wheelchair bound. So we get down to, okay, what are you gonna do, Bill? I'll let him know what our program is, let him know what his options are. Now he's gotta think about it. So I asked him, Bill, what do you need to think about? I need to check my finances. You know, this, I just opened this new business, it's not profitable yet. I get that. So when you look at your finances, Bill, what are you gonna look for? And he didn't really know what, what to say to that. Well, I'm gonna see if I can afford it. Okay, what does afford it look like? Let's go best case scenario, you're in the black by a dollar. You thought you were in the red. Can you afford it? I don't really know. Yeah, so let's go worst case scenario. You're one check clearing away from bankruptcy. Like you didn't manage, you didn't balance your books and you didn't realize how bad you were, but that next, that last check that you wrote, if that clears, you're going bankrupt. Can you afford it then? Well, I certainly can't afford it if I'm going bankrupt. So I asked him, well, what if you were to like liquidate an asset and, you know, find five grand and, and invest it in yourself? You're just as bankrupt, right? Oh, is that an option? He asked. I said, well, it is now. So he hadn't even thought of it. So what I'm getting at is he didn't know what it, he went to go check something that he didn't know what he was looking for. Somewhere in between bankrupt and $1 profit, he knows he's in the red, but somewhere between bankrupt and $1 profit, he doesn't know where in that spectrum it would lie for him to be able to afford it. It's a shadow, it's a shadow. Again, he's illuminating his business, right? This is what I pay attention to. So let me check with that before I can see if I can pay attention to this. He's doing that thing he does. So really he had no reasonable answer for that, which is expected. So I asked Bill, I said, hey Bill, um, is there anything else you need to consider? Um, and he says, yeah, I'm having a neck procedure done, you know, uh, in, in January. And uh, I hope it's not more fusions, but I didn't bother to ask. Um, but he's having a neck procedure. He can't, and I quote, I can't make a decision until that's done. Said, Why? Well, I don't, I don't know what the effect of the, 
what the procedure is going to be and i don't know how long i'm going to be out and so he's putting his health in the shadow right because he wants to illuminate this procedure put his health in the shadow intentional subconscious maybe but intentional so i asked him again i said so what are you looking for but there's gonna be that period in between you get your procedure and you make a decision. What needs to happen in that time for it to be a yes or a no? He hadn't even considered. So he had already given me the reason why he can't make a decision now, but he has no idea what he's looking for. So his reason was I need to look here for something, for an answer. All right, what's the answer look like? I don't have it, I don't know. Again, he's doing that on purpose. So I, again, I play the hypothetical game with him. Hey, Bill, what happens if if uh, worst case, let's go best case scenario, worst case scenario, best case scenario, you, you recover in half the time that they told you it would take to recover. Is it a yes or a no? Well, I suppose that would be a yes if I can afford it. Okay, cool. Let's go to a worst case scenario. It takes five times longer to recover than you anticipated. So that can be a yes or a no. And I am so happy he did this, but he actually went to that place of logic and reason and said, boy, if it takes me five times as long to recover, then I must be in way worse shape than I thought. That would be more confirmation I need the program. Yes, Bill, yes. So what we got Bill to admit was there is no answer that he could stumble across that's gonna tell him he shouldn't participate. Do you think Bill participated? No. And his reasoning came down to the price. And the price, even though he's spent about half, you know, he's invested about half of that for a previous program on something that didn't work and something that left him more confused than he was when he started, more frustrated than he was when he started, um, more doubtful than he was when he started. That is the price line that he was comparing my services to. So in his mind, again, another mental block. In his mind, he'd set up what a reasonable price for a program would be, right? Not tying it into the actual results and the results lasting for a lifetime. He's also illuminating his career and his status as an entrepreneur. He can't jeopardize that to participate in a health program. If I go spend, you know, a few grand out of this, out of my, out of my net worth, what if I need that for this third venture? So when I asked him why he started that third venture, it was, well, I want to feel more fulfilled, more happy, more accomplished, right? And I asked him, I said, is there anything that business could provide you? The biggest home run, the biggest grandson home run in this business, is there anything that can provide you that would be more fulfilling and long lasting than to fix this health problem you have? To erase the confusion, to get rid of those excess pounds, to finally get good sleep, to understand why you stress, to understand why you ruminate, to understand why you sabotage, to understand why you can't change your habits. Is there anything that business could possibly provide? No, of course not. Hey Bill, do you think there's a chance that when you open that business, that was kind of a projection on what you wanted to actually fix, which is with your health? Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is, he says. We can do about it, Bill. I gotta think about it, he says. So the point of this video isn't to share a frustration with someone who didn't see the self-worth to invest in themselves. What I want to do, what I'm hoping to do, is if anybody out there is going through something like what Bill's going through, and if you're putting things in your path, if you're putting pebbles in your path and calling them um, roadblocks, look at your shadows. Anytime I say I need to do something for myself, and you know that that is a literal interpretation, I need to do this, and you put a pebble in your way, you're creating a shadow, right? You're illuminating that pebble so that you can put your health in the shadow. If you were doing that, I just plead with you. Ask yourself the tough questions. Call bullshit on yourself. If you don't have the ability to do that, call me. I'll do it. <laughs> but seriously, don't let yourself get in this position, guys. Don't let yourself get there. Okay, because Bill's 54. I said, hey, Bill, when are you going to fix this? 
if not today, when, when, when's a good time? Right, because that business, we know how businesses go. That business will be, if he's lucky, firing in three years, two years. Then he'll gonna wanna open up another one because that's what he does. That's the thing he does. We all have that thing we do, right? And to make a change that lasts, to make a change that's gonna be impactful, we've gotta make changes that impact us. We've got to make a difference in our habits and in our choices. And the answer is pretty simple. It's not easy, but there is a system to get down to it. There's a system to understand why you sabotage. There is a system to understand why you protect what you protect and why you neglect what you neglect. It's all personalized, but it's all traceable. But if any of this resonates with you, like if you're looking for something, if you're not quite ready to invest in yourself, feel free, I've got free resources. Download my free guide, biohackingtruth.com forward slash guide. It's got the five biohacking truth pillars of health and wellness. I mean, we've got your thinking, we've got your attunement, we've got your movement, we've got your diet, we've got sleep and introspection and me time, we've got breathing, we've got all that, right? And it puts you through a process where, you know, a time process, try this for a week, try that for a week, try this for a week, try that for a week. Yeah, it's a great intro, right? And you can just focus on one area where you're most out of balance and you can just really hone in on that. Um, you know, I've got, uh, you know, if, uh, if diet's your thing, weight's your thing, I've got an e-guide, beat the blow. Be happy to send that to you for free. Just reach out to me, jerry at biohackingtruth.com. Email it right to you. So I'm happy to help. If I can provide the answers that someone needs with a resource that I've already put time into and it helps you, then I don't I wouldn't feel right taking your money. Right? Because that person is just ready to go, right? But if that's not you, if you've tried and you just can't seem to make it work, if you haven't found someone that you've trusted, if you've been promised certain results and been let down, give yourself another chance. Give yourself another chance. You want to call somebody that's been there before. Somebody's doing this for the right reasons. I'm not doing this to make a pile of money. I'm not doing this uh, to be famous. I'm not doing this for any of that. I'm just doing this because I know what it was like to be lost and not have those answers. And as soon as I found the correct answer in the Czech Institute, learned about the holistic, synergistic relationship with our body, mind, and spirit, once I learned that, Fixing any issue with the self becomes much more simple. It's, uh, it's all an inside out affair. <laughs> you trace it to the root cause and then you reverse the root cause. Whether that's back pain, obesity, indigestion, chronic pain, right? In your joints, um, lack of fulfillment in life, just unable to get enthusiastic about anything any of that it's all the same it's all the same mechanism you just need to trace it back and reverse it but if you are ready for some guidance if you are ready for a personalized plan that's going to work if you're ready to commit if you're ready to put the work in i'm here for you reach out to me anytime like i said jerry at biohackingtruth.com reach me direct 406-241-3763 or if you just want to get your toes wet in, in this holistic health thing what is this all about what does it mean by biohacking what do you mean by that, right? It doesn't have to be UV light on your on your reproductive organs and you don't have to take a nice bath every day. You know, that's not what biohacking is about. It's, it's about changing your environment, right? To affect your genetic expression. That's literally what biohacking is. And for some people, that's just drinking water instead of Mountain Dew. That's biohacking, <laughs> right? For some people, it's putting down the packaged food and picking up real food. That's biohacking. That's where it starts. And the further you get towards optimization, the more crafty you can get with your program. All right, guys, I hope this provides value to you. I hope if, if, some, if anyone watching, if you're in that position, right, where you're just kind of stuck in an action, in, stuck in inaction, and you're looking for a solution, this is it. We've got your answers. We've got the keys to your health freedom. All right, we'll bail you out of jail. All right, reach out to me anytime, 24-7, 365. Peace, much love, and live well. And let's pray for Bill. Ha, ha, ha.